In the next two lessons, I'm going to teach you about using reset style sheets and grids. So a few lessons ago, I noted that didn't it seem common that we were always overriding the browser's default styling? And if we want to fix that, we can use a reset style sheet. So there are a couple ways to do this. We can either create one on our own, but it's much more common to use a popular reset style sheet. And that way we can be sure it's up to date and we don't have to worry about it. One of the most popular is created by Eric Meyer, who's very active in the CSS and the web standards world. We can go to meyerweb.com slash eric slash tools slash CSS slash reset. And we can see here that he has created a reset style sheet. And this will take all of the browser defaults and bring it back to zero, essentially. Notice he's resetting the margin and padding on every element so that we don't have to do that. And what you'll see is this will bring our pages back to a very raw state. I'm going to copy this and come into our editor. And next, within CSS, I could place this like so. But it's also common to create a new file called reset CSS, and then we'll paste it in. Now, if we want to include this, we can link to it in our index.html file. Using our new Zen coding skills, I can type link, and that will automatically expand, and I can simply reference it. Now, notice I'm having two links here, and this is a bit beyond the scope of this course, but it's important to keep in mind that you don't want to link to 10 different style sheets in your project because that's more what we call HTTP requests that the browser must perform. So what you would probably do is before you deploy this, you would either run a script that would combine these together, or you could manually create a new file and copy all of your style sheets into it and then reference that one CSS file. And what this is going to do is because you're not loading as many files, the page is going to load much more quickly. So that's something to keep in mind. For now, we're going to separate these for understanding's sake. Save that and let's create some markups. So we'll do what we did last time. Create a wrapper and a header with a heading one that says my website and then a nav element with a UL with three list items, each which has an anchor tag. And we'll also give a href to each anchor tag of a pound sign. Good, now we'll say home about contact. And then finally below here, maybe we'll have a new div with main with P that says the body of my website. And that looks good to me. So let's view this in the browser and see what it looks like with the reset applied. And now I want you to note everything has been reset. If we remove it, you can see we're going to receive any browser defaults. But if we get rid of it, it reduces everything to their absolute defaults. The headings don't have any font weight. List items don't receive bullets. There are no margins applied. So it's important to know that there is a lot of debate on whether this is helpful. A lot of people feel that they should not use the reset because they're going to add a lot of these stylings back in anyways, and it's a waste of time. Other people feel, and I think I fall into this second group, is there's less work to do when you understand exactly what every line is doing. So I don't have to think, hmm, I wonder if the browser is applying margin here. I can know, nope, if it's being applied, it's because I specified it. However, you should decide for yourself. Another popular tool is what we call normalize.css. And this has been gaining a lot of popularity. And what normalize does is it's not as much a reset as it will normalize all browsers. So it will take any inconsistencies that are fairly common. In older versions of IE, perhaps the padding on a UL won't be identical to what it is in a newer browser. Things like that. It will correct bugs. It will normalize styles. So let's check out the demo. And you can see here, this is what we would call a base. So it will automatically apply anchor tags. It will set site elements correctly. It will make sure mark elements are highlighted. You might prefer to use this technique as well. If you want to download it, you can just click right here and it will link to a style sheet and you can copy that, bring it into your project. You would probably create its own style sheet. But then if I reload the page, you can see it will normalize that. So you'll reset everything to the defaults and then use normalize to fix common issues. In this case, buttons can be a little bit odd in Firefox. Uh, same thing with WebKit. Anyhow, I definitely encourage you to look through this because it will teach you about a lot of the browser inconsistencies that exist. And for this long style sheet, you can see that it's quite a bit. Definitely consider doing this. And what you'll find in the next lesson when we start learning about grids is that many grids provide their own reset, which are generally going to be quite similar to Eric Myers. So we'll take a look at that in the next lesson.